Is he the right man for you? Can he put food on the table? Can he take care of you? Who can take you to the hospital? I am the man that he was talking about. I fell in love just like anybody else. But society did not allow me. They tried to convince my girlfriend to leave me, saying that I am good for nothing. But she was strong. She stood her ground and married me. I was born on a beautiful Sunday morning in the northern part of Uganda. And therefore, my parents named me Sunday. Usually, children who are born on Sundays are believed to be blessed. But was I really blessed? I got polio at an early age, and it rendered both my legs powerless. I could not walk or even stand by myself. My mother contacted an organization, and they supported me with assistive devices, like calipers for my legs and crutches which I use for walking. She later enrolled me into a special needs primary school so that I can attain education. But before I could graduate from primary, something terrible happened which ruined my entire childhood. My father died, leaving my mother by herself. Then three years later, my mother too died. I remained in the hands of my relatives. They took me to a regular secondary school, and there I found it really, really, really hard to cope. Besides accessibility problems, I faced discrimination from the students, and surprisingly, even the teachers. I remember the students would make fun of me because of how I walk and because of how I look. And the students, I mean, and the teachers, they would call me names, I don't know whether they were compliments, but they would call me names like Lamboy. Time came. I made a decision and said, no, I'm not going to be moved by what people are doing to me. I have to concentrate on what is dear to me, and that is education. But unfortunately, I lost it too because I couldn't afford the high school fees rates. I dropped out of school. People with disabilities in my communities have problems, and these problems vary from one person to another. But I am going to talk about the general problems that people with disabilities face in my community. We still have discrimination and negative attitudes from family members and even potential employers. There is still lack of market-relevant skills that com can compete in the job market. We still have accessibility problems when it comes to roads and having access to uh, public facilities. Then there is illiteracy due to lack of education. And finally, when our mothers give birth to children with disabilities, they are rejected by their husbands because they say disability is not in their family lineage. You may be wondering what could be the root cause to some of these problems. I will quickly walk you through some, some, some of them. Northern Uganda is still recovering from an insurgency that took place for 20 years. This war led to loss of lives, properties, displacement of people, and other people were left permanently disabled. The second root cause is <coughs> poverty as a result of war as well. The third root cause is the weak government policy concerning disability. The few policies which are there just remain on papers. Then the last one is superstitious beliefs. People believe when a child is born in a family and that child becomes disabled, it is a manifestation of a curse or a punishment to that family. 
Now, being a member of my community and a person with disability, I felt a very big burden in my heart. I felt something needs to be done. And therefore, together with my wife, we founded an, an organization called PESA Africa. PESA means persons with special abilities. We believe every human on earth, regardless of disability or not, has something special inside them. And if supported, they can realize their full potential. We began with the goal of empowering them through ICT, information and communication technology. Then later on, we realized there are more, more gaps that need to be filled. The first gap is a gap between primary education and secondary education. Our children with disabilities don't get access to secondary education. Then the second gap is the gap between theoretical learning and practical application. The education system in Uganda focuses more on theory than practical. And it doesn't prepare our youth for life after school. And that is why we have a lot of unemployment among the young ones. Then the third gap is the gap between, of course, the disabled and the non-disabled. People with disability are considered to be the lowest members of the society, and they are discriminated against by the non-disabled. As a solution, we want to come up with an inclusive secondary school where both the disabled and the non-disabled live and learn together with love, respect, empathy, and equal participation. We decided to use education as a tool to prepare our youth for independent living, self-sustainability, as well as to break the circle of discrimination against people with disability. In future, when we get our own land, we want to establish a bigger center, and in this center, we will have all the theoretical sub subjects taught in the mainstream schools in Uganda. Then we incorporate it with practical skills application. And our approach is going to be through experiential learning methods, where we have a, a, I mean, a school garden for, for people doing, doing agriculture. We learn through theater plays, through music and art, through storytelling, through dancing, to mention but a few. We will make sure that every subject that is taught in our school is linked to what is happening in the world. Every topic that is being taught in a subject is linked to what is happening in the world, in life after school. The difference between our school and other schools is, one, it will be the practical approach, then two, it will be one of the few inclusive schools in Uganda. I can gladly say I am not the lame, cripple, disabled boy I used to be known. Disability gave me an opportunity to see the world from a different perspective. It gave me an opportunity to discover my potential. It helped me to find my purpose. And today, I am known as a passionate musician and the founder of an NGO. But tomorrow, I want to be part of bridging the gap between the disabled and the non-disabled, between school and life after school. Do I feel blessed? Oh yes, I do. And my parents were happy. They gave me a name someday. They believed.
Sunday. 